second uh, sensitive issue that I was referring to was private education, because it is one of those things that uh, we, we are very, very nervous about. Or we don't like to talk about it too much. Um, yet, like we were discussing the other day, uh, Ashish and Dr. Kasur Rangan, it, a lot of schools, uh, even in smaller towns, are really private schools. Uh, the challenge is improving education or effectively implementing a policy like this isn't just about working with governments, state governments. It's, it's, it's also about uh, providing some sort of incentives for private schools to really do these things. Uh, and Ashish, I'll come to you first. What, what, what do you think can be done in this area? Yeah, so at Central Square Foundation, you know, we primarily work with government schools, but then we look at the system and say, and, and we actually just put out a report on this, which is a very objective report, which is that 47.5% of children in the school system in India now go to either unaided or aided private schools. So almost half. In 16 states in India, 50% or more of the children go to private schools. So, you know, the train has left the station. I don't think we can unwind the clock. I think if we care about all our children, I care about all our children. I want whether the child is in private school or government school, we want them to acquire the foundational literacy and numeracy skills. We want them to succeed in life. So I think we need to look at the private system and say that, look, they play a role. Uh, I don't think we should, um, uh, they, there should be much greater transparency within the private system. Uh, I wouldn't call them bad actors. Some are bad actors, but I think many of them are actually doing a service to children. But we need greater, we should give them greater autonomy. So lower the regulation, get rid of the license Raj, but we should insist on greater autonomy and greater account, greater transparency and greater accountability from them as well. So that parents are informed and have uh, proper data before they decide where their children should go to school. I think it's also important to think about the incentives we create for private school owners to want to improve their schools. Uh, right now, if you look at just for household effects, actually private schools don't perform too much better than government schools. And so I really think that, and it's partly because they're really, what they're showing is that the fact that the teacher shows up and there's greater accountability or there's a computer in the school, you know, et cetera. So I, I think it's very, very important that we create the right incentives for them. And the last point I'd like to make is we must remember that the private schools we think of are not the private schools of India. 70% of children go to schools where the fees are 1,000 rupees or less per month. 45% of children go to schools where the fees are 500 rupees per month or lower. These are budget private schools. And average school size is about 200 children. And so it's these schools, often, you know, these uh, ramshackle schools, uh, which really we need to figure out a way for them to improve quality uh, as well. And this is a real challenge going forward. But we need to carry them along and create the right incentives uh, and ensure that transparency exists because we want all children to succeed. Ashish beautifully summarized the issues related to this, and he has really clarified many things. In fact, the uh, policy is in tune with the kind of things that Ashish mentioned about the outlook for the private schools. I want to say one important thing. First is on the regulatory framework, we have kept, we have brought the private school and public schools at the same level. There is an even handedness we deal with. We are not dealing with them separately. This is the most important thing we should say. Then. The regulatory aspects, if we take away from inputs to outcomes, there is no reason why whatever is the thing that to improve the quality of the private school, that will automatically should come in. And this is an expectation. And if one looks at all the kind of light but tight part of it, and the parameters that are now specified, what the public school would have, whether things like whether the safety, security, uh, probity in finances or sound process of governance, they are applicable to both. If you just do it, and the only thing is, as Ashish rightly mentioned, it has to be transparent. It is in the public domain. And of course, then there are many things which are common to all the schools. The TET qualification is critical. Elevating the teachers of the school teachers to higher educational institutions over as getting the BED and other qualifications are concerned. 
And then most importantly, I also want to say that the policy allows you to share the resources between public institutions and private institutions. So there can be agreement on this. So all the policy has given enough thought to make sure that public school and private school can compete on even terms together. And then the effort from the government system will be to make sure that we make the public school uh, as, as a best, best place to go as good as what if there is a perception with regard to the private school. But that gives an incentive also to the private school to make sure that they come up to this guy, the, the, the other side. So on the whole, I want to say, and I agree with Ashish, that there is no difference that we have made in the policy with respect to private. And even though there are conflicting interpretation to this policy, I want to use this forum to say that some saying that there is a privatization that the policy supports. And then there is two other part, the group says that they, 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 under the support for the public institutions, the private is neglected. I think neither is true. I think it's a very balanced and very well nuanced um, policy. And we have given a lot of thought to this question because we knew it will come up. We, in fact, pose the question first before formulating the policy.